Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 23. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So on the first of every month, we do this series where we look at the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization. As of May 1st, 2022, the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a very modest 1.71 trillion. However, the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, which is the red line that you see, again, is a monotonically increasing function, is coming in at approximately 1.65 trillion. This represents a very slight overvaluation of approximately 3%. Now, 3% is the lowest that we have been overvalued since late 2020. We have not come down to the fair value regression trend line this far, this close to it, for a long time. All right, now remember, this is the entire asset class, not just Bitcoin. And one of the things we've talked about is that the reason we use this chart is because we understand that crypto is full of manic, parabolic, bull run phases and then somewhat depressing bear markets that tend to bottom out when the sentiment is at the absolute worst, and it's also typically the best time to buy. <coughs> so we look at this chart and we say, you know, there's, there's definitely phases of overvaluation and then phases of undervaluation. And the overvaluation phases tend to get not quite as intense as time goes on. When you look at this chart, in terms of going to the upper green line, we haven't even made it there. Okay. Now again, there are no guarantees that we make it anywhere. We could just um, we could just cl stay closer to the red line as the asset class matures. But you can see that compared to you know prior cycles, this was a fair. You know, this one really has not shown us what we were really looking for. Now, one of the things to consider here is that this is a logarithmic regression function. So it already accounts for diminishing returns because the more explosive growth happens early on. And then as time goes on, you can see that it really starts to curve over. Now with us coming back down to the fair value, you might ask yourself, well, what does this mean? Well, what I will say is this, if we go undervalued, which is a real possibility, if we go undervalued, then it's going to be somewhat somewhat of a dull time in the cryptoverse okay but you should know that when you just look at this chart it's the undervaluation phase that ultimately leads to the best returns later on okay so do keep that in mind one of the things i i wanted to point out here are we, we have these three peaks so we have one two and three and in this cycle so far we've had two sort of bunny hill peaks that one took us to 64k obviously the entire asset class was almost three trillion and then over here i think we, we hit around three trillion Okay, around 3 trillion. And now we've come back down to the fair value, which is approximately 1.65 trillion. So the question I, I, I suppose is these intermediate peaks. So we had one in 2013 where we had like a, a pretty crazy move to the upside. We then had a nine, or I think it was like an 85 or 90% correction back down. And then we ultimately went up to the green line, you know, later that year. So far this cycle, we've had two peaks that fell short of the upper logarithmic regression trend line. And I think the argument is, you know, if this cycle is going to go up to a much higher level, it's not going to happen this year. But furthermore, if we go significantly undervalued, meaning if the entire asset class is going, let's put it this way, right? Like, so if Bitcoin goes, goes back to 20K or something, then that would actually be, as far as I'm concerned, that would be considered a new cycle, okay? I, I would not consider that the same cycle if Bitcoin were to go back to 20K. So I look at this chart and I, I see us that we're sort of riding that fair value regression trend line. We have ridden it before uh, on, on a couple of occasions. You can see we wrote it right here and then we wrote it right here and then we ultimately broke down into the final phase of the bear market, okay? So that's the point is historically breaking down below this line that's sort of like the end of the downtrend and, and the beginning of a reaccumulation phase. So the point is, is if we break down and come down to the lower bound on, these, on, this, on this regression band or even halfway down like we did in 2018, you're, you're more than likely looking at, at us getting really close to the end of the bear market if, if we're not already at the end of it. A lot of times it, it actually takes people till the end of a bear market to even recognize that it is a bear market. And then by that point, the bear market is in fact over, okay? So 
I think the way that I, I the, the best way to interpret this chart is to say that the fair value of the asset class right now is 1.65 trillion. We're currently just over it at 1.71 trillion. So, you know, as far as getting the most for your money, you're getting more for it today than you did at any point in 2021. Doesn't mean we can't go undervalued for a while. Okay, so do consider that we, we could we could certainly go undervalued if this is not going to hold up. One of the things that I, I think is sort of culminating into one big crescendo right now is that you know you have the Fed meeting in a couple days, so we'll see what they do. You have the S and P that's tr maybe trying to put in a double bottom, but I don't know. I mean, the, the short term TA stuff isn't my thing, especially on on traditional markets. So I would say you know if if the traditional markets bounce going into May. If they bounce, and I know, I mean, I know the general thinking is sell in May and go away, but the, the, also the general thinking is that you should have a, a, a Santa Claus rally, and we didn't have that, so maybe everything's just reversed this year. Um, but if we get some type of a rally by the S and P and by the Nasdaq go, as we as we really make our way through May, then I think there's a, a good chance that Bitcoin and the entire asset class could see some type of a bounce in May. However, if on the other hand, traditional markets continue to deteriorate, then I would say it's more than likely that Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency asset class would go undervalued for a while. OK, so that is that's ultimately what I, I think people need to take away from this and and to, to consider that the fair value, according to the regression curve for just Bitcoin, is actually currently, I think, just below thirty seven thousand dollars. So if we look, if we take the percent difference between the total market cap and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, this is what you get. And we've made plenty of comparisons before to the 2013 market cycle and discussing the implications of a, of a stretched out version of 2013 where you get some type of double peak cycle. What's interesting is, I mean, we have had a double peak cycle, but the second peak actually came in more less overvalued than the first one, which is very different from what 2013 showed us. Now that we're coming back to the fair value, we have to ask ourselves, you know, if if we hold here and continue higher, then we need to we need to keep in mind that the 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 level that we could reach is probably lower than if we go undervalued for a while and then go up because it's going undervalued that lets you really propel yourself to those to those much higher levels. But I look at this chart and I, I say, you know, we we had these the same type of pattern in 2013. We're having the same type of pattern. In this cycle, we had one peak, one peak, and then we had a second peak here, and then technically we had a second peak here, although the second peak for the entire asset class came in less overvalued than in early 2021. And it's interesting because, again, if you look at the risk levels for the asset class and whatnot, everything was sort of screaming in early 2021, but not quite as much in, in late 2021. So I think at this point, you know, the, the strategy that would probably suit everyone the best, or I, I guess I should say I'm not offering financial advice here, but one strategy to consider here is that, you know, if you're if you are DCAing Bitcoin, make sure to leave room in case it if it in case it goes down further. But also I would say do not be deterministic about anything. But if anything, you're gonna be deterministic on it should be that Bitcoin trends higher with time. Okay, I mean, currently, I think Bitcoin's trading for around $38,000. There certainly is a, a, you know, a reason to think that we could go test the summer lows at the very least. And so if we do that, then the asset class will go undervalued. Okay, it will go undervalued. But as I've said before, it's the undervaluation time when it's the best time historically to infect by Bitcoin. So when we look at this chart and we say, all right, well, the, the market cap right now is about 3% overvalued. So this is we're getting into the phase now where we're not as many people are going to even watch these videos because they've gotten completely disenfranchised with the cryptocurrency asset class. So I would say stick with it if you can. I know it's a hard time right now. Stick with it if you can. And if we go undervalued, if recognize that that is, in fact, the, the, the best time historically to buy cryptocurrency. Now, one of the things we've talked about before is our inevitable path to a $10 trillion market capitalization. And I've said before, really, the earliest I, I think that we could get to 10 trillion would be late 2022. This chart allows it to happen by the summer of 2022. But as I've said before, I don't think we're going to get there, um, you know, as early as the summer of 2022. But you can see the upper green line as it as it continues to 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 move on. You know, this is that the 10 trillion dollar line is this one right here. So my argument has been before. I, I think that we can make it there. But we're not we were never going to get there in 2021. The earliest we could get there would be, say, late 2022. And then as the years go on, I think the, the probability continues to increase. So 2023 um, is certainly an interesting year, especially 
from a perspective of the dollar. We see the dot. We know that Bitcoin generally goes up when the dollar's in a downtrend. Um, and the dollar was in a downtrend in 2017. It was in a downtrend in 2020. Perhaps we'll get another one in 2023. We'll have to wait and find out. But generally speaking, I would be looking out, um, you know, at least one year from now, the earliest I think we could probably get to the 10 trillion at this point, considering how far down we are on the fair value regression trend line. Like it would take a long time to get back up here and we could go undervalued first. So I would say, ideally speaking, it would happen in 2023. But we need to be patient and see what happens here if we go undervalued. So the whole idea is that we should be able to go to $10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion. As we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.